Hello, people. Welcome to the United Way. Actually, uh, well, my name is Rob Dukan. Uh, I'm one United fan just like you uh, watching the video today. As you saw on the thumbnail, uh, the, the Glazers have basically choose the... Um, if you do believe this story, the Glazers have basically choose the new owners of Manchester United. They have made the, the right bid. They have chosen the right bidder for few, for Manchester United in terms of who is going to be uh, the owner of Manchester United, and that's uh, Jim Ratcliffe. Don't get this from me. I'm not the one giving this message. It's the Sun magazine, the Sun Journal, the Sun outlet, who has come out with this scoop uh, that uh, the Glazers uh, actually is here on my right which is basically maybe on your left if you're opposite me, but I can read it for you guys. I wasn't coming out yet today because I wanted to do this video. I was actually wanted to uh, give you guys my uh, preview against uh, Wolves, but uh, I think so far, guys, uh, in regards to the sales of Manchester United, our community here, we haven't made a lot of videos. And the reason why we haven't made a lot of videos, I want you to guys to understand is because this is a business transaction. This is something that fans have more or less nothing to say. Fans have very little influence. But as Manchester United fans, we have to jump on this topic once in a while because this is what fan channels do. If you go from one fan channel to another, you will get clear. Is that not that Richie? I mean, I have someone who watches all the fan channels and get back to me with, in terms of analysis. If you go to one of the um, more of the fan channels, we have got to be, we have uh, people which I won't call their names. They see it and and play a role like they know everything. They 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 know more of the deal. They have contacts and everything. I want to tell you guys something. If you subscribe to this channel, that I won't sit here and start lying to people. I will tell you guys the way it is. As a fan of a football club. The most you can do is to share your op your opinion as we are doing today. Don't think anything which people say it's real. It's just an opinion. So let me go uh, to the uh, to the uh, to the scoop which I just told you about Glazers. This is I took this from the mail the mail who uploaded here. I said the Glazers have reportedly identified their preference bidder for Manchester United. More than six months on from the club uh, first. Uh, been put on sales. According to the Sun, Sir Jim Ratcliffe is the set is said to be uh, identified by the Glazers as their preferred bidder as the process takes a significant step forward and the American's uh, family controversial ownership of the club looks to come to uh, to a close some 18 years after the first the first took it over. That's the father. I keep reminding people. Some new Manchester United fans think that is Joe and, and Abraham, Abraham uh, Glazers. They are the one who bought this club. Their father, who is dead, bought the club of Manchester United. He had um he had his own plans, but you know he he uh, he gave up the ghost. And uh, the the kids are taking care of the club. Uh, which mo mo uh, most of you would say the, ki the kids have destroyed the team in the last 10 years since they have been uh, taking care of Manchester United. So guys, um, as you guys know, let me just give you a rundown on what happened very short. Yeah, we tried to broke this story so that the layman, the ordinary fan, you know, who knows nothing about Manchester, just supporting the football team, what happened. So around six months ago, the Glazers realized that they... Manchester United needed investment, needed money into the club. So what they did, uh, they, they, they came out with a scoop. They, yes, before that, most of the fans, there is this Glazer out and stories and so on. The fans didn't want to see, uh, didn't want Glazers to be at the top of the ticket. That's the one that they get to sell the team. So we were waiting for, I, I remember there were times here where we were waiting for whosoever. Sir Jim Ratcliffe used to be like an angel or an option for Manchester United. And um, yeah, they they came out and said they they want they're looking for investments, and if they get the right bidder, they will want even they are ready to sell Manchester United as a whole. That's what's what they said. But as time went on, we came to understand through investigation and also through topics online and um, journalist journalistic investigations where we get our secondary information. Nobody gets the first hand information. I want you guys to know this clear. Nobody have you 1 million um, subscribers, 100 subscribers. Nobody has it. Everybody reacts to the stories and gives you their opinion. And that's what I'll give you now. But my own opinion is coming out from experience. I've been part of uh, an organization selling a massive organization for almost a billion dollars. Not like this. I was in the low level, but I understand how it works. 
I've been a football player. I didn't play in the Premier League, but I was a respectable player in my country. I understand football. And I'm not a perfect person. I can be wrong. But I want to tell you guys something. In such a deal where the owners don't really want to leave the club, they will always want to protect their interests. And uh, today, what has been happening is um, we had this Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Hassem, uh, Jassim, sorry, Sheikh Jassim from the Qatar in Let's just put it the Qatar Investment Fund because it will be owned by the Qatar government if United is going to uh, is sold by the to the Qataris. This is a guy who started in the U.S. He's back. Uh, he he's worth some billions and uh, he's interested in using um, the Manchester United as a tool to I'll put it clear as a tool for their propaganda. Forget about all this. He's not he's not throwing money. He's gaining something which is more than just money, which both of us we know we need. Manchester needs it. Then we have uh, the British richest man, um, uh, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, who is a local lad who wanted to buy Chelsea at the last minute. He failed. Who isn't that wealthy in regards? I mean, if you want to compare him with, with the Sheikh and he wanted to buy Manchester United. And the situation which is clear is um, since the Manchester United fans have been spoiled, this is, this is why I said the hypocrisy of fans, you know, well, my sister always said this, people are people. I'm discussing with you guys like friends. You need to have an ear. That's why if you have a chance, please just listen to what I'm saying because it's important. People are people. Everybody wanted that the Glazers to lose control power of making decisions to Manchester United. Everybody. If you go to all fun channels, I got all the, the where is it? All fun channels, most, most people wanted somebody to be at the face, not the Glazers. We're tired. So we came out, they came out um, with a, um, the Sheikh, who has given very favorable conditions, which, I mean, it's a dream condition, clearing out their debts, building new stadiums. Those are all promises when you want to buy a team. Like what, if you remember, one of the biggest promises was uh, in terms of uh, changing hands of leadership in any football club was when Florentino Perez came and uh, and changed the strategy of Manchester United when he won the, what's that, uh, Fernando Sens? Oh. He's of late also of COVID. There's something different out of topic. That was Real Madrid. And he brought the Galatikos, the Galatikos bringing Figo from Barcelona to Real Madrid and then start buying the, the Zidane and so on. So he, he, he made a pledge with um, the Sheikh Hassan. Sheikh Hassan made a pledge of b turning Manchester United into a successful team through his massive finance. That was so attractive to the British public. Most of the Western public, let me put it this way. And even most of the Africans, you know, we have a Facebook group, guys. Join our Facebook group. I hope you're watching and join our Facebook group and get information from there. All the links are here below. So he came out and said, you know what? We, I am ready to, um, to give United all these facilities. And that rings the bell. Because most Manchester United fans understand that the success of their neighbors in the same team cities because they have that endless cash to spend. There is this thing that for you to be successful in Europe, which I don't agree, is that you need to have total finance. You have to have endless finance, endless wealth, super rich. I don't agree with that. And I've told, I made a lot of videos here. I don't agree with that. The success, you can be successful in European football by having a very good management. The problem with Manchester United all this while is because we had, I don't want to insult him, we had this Ed Woodward. Ed Woodward has... Destroy Manchester United to today. We have Phil Jones. We have players who have never kicked the ball. Tuan Sebi, they are in the pitch. We have players who are just going on loan who 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 earn a hundred thousand uh, pounds a week, and they are not guys. They 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 are not contributing in the team. Manchester United, the owners. I mean, Manchester United for a footballer is like a stupid club. Sorry to say this. It's like all these idiots. Let's get a contract. That's why with Ten Hag coming and seeing the De Gea, you see they're trying to correct things about the, the contract. You see, even Marcus Rashford was asking half a, a million pound a week. I think he would not get it in his contract. United will hold tight on that. United need to change their policies. If they don't change their policy, that's where they fall. And I think this is where Sergio Ratcliffe can come in. Buying players, let us be honest, the Glazers have signed out to buy players. The only problem with the Glazers, I'm not saying they are good. They will be the highest. I mean, the hashtag of this video will be Glazers out. The, the Glazers had the money to spend. Yes, they are greedy. They, they take a lot of uh, dividends from the team twice a year. That's roughly 20, 20 million pounds a year for all the past 10 years. Yes, that is true. But the money of buying players has been there. 
the biggest problem we had um, on that on the other hand is that the 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 depths in which we are half a billion half a billion pounds so i don't think money has been the issue and canceling the debt while spending endlessly if you don't have the real team talking about real team backroom staff with something that rings a bell is which shows a little bit of desperation from the Qataris is that they wanted ex players to be part of the board. How do you have ex players to be part of the board with the mentality you have in the UK, with the mentality you have with Great Britain, where it's all about friends? We had Oligona Soskaya yeah, talking about, we had Oligona Soskaya being the manager for Manchester United, and Oligona Soskaya was supported by his, his friends that they played together with. All, you know, Roy Ferdinand, Roy Keane. Uh, you had all these players. Gary Neville made it clear in one of his uh, podcasts that he would not support. He would not. He cannot. He cannot be critical on his ex uh, teammate. How do you go forward? So you see where the problem is coming from. Manchester United is not the problem of money. I think with the way Manchester United has been managed all this while, even if you give the world wealthiest man to manage Manchester United, he will not be successful. Of course, he will not. So guys, this is why I'm trying to say, um, uh, coming back to the topic here, which is Manchester United, I want to say that uh, w what I've heard so far, I don't believe this story because it's from the Sun. Because if it came out from people like um, David Onstein, uh, you know, you know Simon Lucas, these are people who, uh, I would say, they control their mouth. They don't run their mouth anyhow. Before, before they want to get something out there, they are spot on. But the Sun has strategy, which they are out. They create controversy in the, in the way they express their 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 um, I would say their messages and also they are not always to be honest the son they have not always they, they are not meant to be correct let me put it that way the son has a reputation which most in the UK here yeah, know they are not meant to be correct and that will that that is why they usually will take this with a big uh, pinch of salt. When it comes to the sun but the reason as i said from the beginning from the video why i am reacting to this video is simple because i'm a manchester united fan i want to hear from you guys what you think about this story so the story is that sir jim ratcliffe has um uh, uh has been the is the preferable choice for the glazers you know when i said i, I took part in this in a kind of sales of a company which i i didn't take part i'm trying to say i was a very minor figure in that don't over hype me is that I know that there are a lot of technicalities going behind the scenes. One of them, sometimes the press come into play where you can always boost your image by playing, you know, they call it testing the waters. So I, I think uh, I don't, I'm, I have no proof for this. You can always get someone in the media to spread to see what the fans think about things. So um, it could be that way. It could be right. It could be a r real message, but I, I doubt it. I really do. Then I want to come back with the issue about Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Sir Jim Ratcliffe, this was a guy that were calling him a god. This is why I say the hypocrisy of humans in general. This some year, some, some just less than six months ago, Sir Jim Ratcliffe was like the god till we had this offer from the Qataris. And you know who really want the Qataris to come? I am telling you that if the Qataris come to Manchester United on this club, and um, they they don't meet up with their obligations. The same people crying for them coming that they wanted a full sales because it's the problem that the Man United fans uh, had placed. So the issue here is that a full sale for Manchester United will be buying all them roughly 70%, 69%, 69% of Manchester United, which is owned by the Glazers. That will be a full sale for Manchester United fans because there is 30% or 31% at the uh, uh, US stock exchange. So what happens is the 31% is in the US stock exchange is... Um, Traded as common shares, you know. So anyone can buy stocks. If I want to go now, I can buy stock from Manchester United. I think it's 20 something, 22 today, I don't know, um, US dollars. So uh, um, these guys, the Qatari wanted to buy everything, you know. And there is this question where they are saying, Rav, um, how does, why, how does, um, the Glazers. Why is it that the Glazers are said? That, why, why is it that Sir Jim Ratcliffe is said to be to uh, to rate the, the the club more than uh, the Qataris who have more money? This is simple. It's because the Glazers rated the club, they valued the club for six billion, right? 
The Qataris have given an offer of 5.5.1 or 5.2 to a max 5.1 maybe, but they have talked about closing the debt, canceling the debt and everything. So if the 5.1 plus, uh, plus canceling the debt, paying the debt of somebody who could put a debt in it and he still need to pay that debt, which is out of the 5 point something billion, it, it, it shows that the, the Glazers, uh, it shows that the Qataris are really interested in really having a new, a new, um, start for Manchester United. But again, talking about the half billion debt, right? Half billion pound debt for, for Manchester United. In regards to Serge Mraklip, his strategy is that he owns a company, right? Um, Inos, the Inos company, right? They are now trading oil in the US. They are doing some, a lot of deals here. He is trying to take the, the, the debts of Manchester United as half a billion pound uh, to transfer it to Inos. So he's borrowing it from Inos on the money, right? <laughs> so, the, so the worries for Manchester United fans are simple and that they think he, they think that uh, Sergi Mraklip coming into the team is will add more debt. They think that the Qataris have endless money they will spend as they're spending in Paris Saint-Germain, PSG, they'll spend as they're spending uh, as what the Buddha base are doing in with Manchester City. So guys, I just want to say that this, uh, it is not really easy but Manchester United is not Manchester City, who had no funds. Manchester United is not um, it's not just PSG. The, the thing with Manchester United, the biggest problem, I want to end it here, is our management. We gave the club to a, to a novice American by name, Ed Woodward. So Ed Woodward destroyed the team the past 10 years, when David Gale left the team, when... Uh, even when say Alex Ferguson on last days, it was difficult for him to do transfer. The money was tight, you know, and there were not a lot. There was no strategy moving forward. That's the problem of Manchester United. Brighton, which is a small team in the Premier League, they are not playing well because they just got up one day. They have a strategy with the budget, the way they recruit their players from South America. They, they have a good strategy. Football today is not necessarily about money. It's about money if you want to bring the massive stars. But if you want to build up a team that will be successful and grow, I don't think really think that you need to have a lot of money as people think. So guys, tell me what you think below. Are you happy with the Sir Jim Ratcliffe uh, story? And uh, please drop your comment. I would reply this a lot uh, myself. You know, I, in this channel, we don't talk a lot about this because we're more interested about the club, the football part of the team, but uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the side of uh, football. But uh, I said it was important as owning a small community like we have today. Uh, uh, expressing myself, this is what I think. I think I've made it clear that I don't think that there is an issue with Sir Jim Rackley if he has the right strategy. I don't think it's the worst thing to do. The best thing which most of the United fans wanted was Blazers out. So if Sir Jim Rackley takes 50% uh, of Manchester United owns it or 51, which is he controls, the call it control packet, the control stakes, and the Glazers have 20% uh, 20, uh, and Sir Jim Ratcliffe has promised that in the next two, three years, they would like to acquire some of the Glazers percent. Manchester United is not really a bad thing. We should stop dreaming. I know we have a lot of young fans here who sleep on the computers and, uh, and you know, dream. The world is in flat, my friends. So, well, I hope, hope you get that in board. So sorry for me talking this long. I think I was, the next time I will have a, a chat about this topic will be when it's already clear who the new owner is. But I wanted to say that it is very unfair the way Sir Jim Ratcliffe has been treated online today about my, with Manchester United fans. It's just like flip flop. I, I, sometimes I wonder these are Manchester United fans writing all this. So um, uh, yeah, that's my say. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. As I said, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing a lot of podcasts in the holiday. I was hoping that I would have 10, if I had 10,000 subscribers, I would travel with the Manchester United football team, the US, and getting you guys live uh, contents with our cameraman here. If you see the images and go, we have some technical issues in the studio, but we'll get hold of that soon. Uh, the problem with the cameras and it's, I'm not, I'm not into that, but yeah, but you know, we didn't get what we wanted and our sponsor said, okay, then maybe next time, because this was one of the, one of the conditions that we're given uh, the minimum conditions. We couldn't meet it. And uh, so guys, please make sure you subscribe, join the United way.
drop your comments, share these videos. The most important thing, share, share, share United fans. We do things a bit different, not like your ordinary United fans screaming and shouting and being uh, arrogant. Anyway, guys, thanks again. And yeah, join me soon for our preview against Wolves where you might win one of these face caps. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.